what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of go through what I had done before with Jansen, where I was talking about wines that I really, I'm really passionate about, wines that I truly love. Uh, that was an easy one because it's Napa. Everyone knows Napa. Everyone thinks of it when you're thinking about world-class wines. And those wines, of course, were world-class and delicious. And it was really nice of Kyle to be here. Um, but I'll be doing a lot of solo work now. So what I wanted to go into next was an area that people don't really think about too often for the best of the best quality. And one area that gets overlooked so often but is starting to get tons and tons of acclaim is Walla Walla. Uh, there's some top, top level producers. Guys like Charles Smith are up there too. And there's one family that made it more available and, and more famous than it has ever been before. And they've been doing it for over 100 years now, uh, been, been uh, working that land and being in that area. And that's the uh, Leonetti family. So I actually wanted to go through the Leonetti line. I'll be going through the 13s and 114 with the Merlot. Uh, just kind of going through my tasting notes on it real fast, uh, telling you a little bit about it. Uh, I will also, and if you're interested, and if you collect, I would highly suggest getting them. I'll have pricing below and, uh, and also information. And then also if you're part of our newsletter, which I'll have a link to sign up for our newsletter right here, uh, then you can actually follow along with that and you'll know about this before anyone else does. Uh, and these are extremely limited. So it's, it's gonna be more of a first come first serve basis unless you are able to contact me quickly and shoot me an email, I can hold some aside for you. I'll hold wines for up to two weeks if someone's looking for them. Um, or if you just wanna watch it for educational purposes, great, but these are really good wines. The very first one I'm gonna go into is the Sangiovese, this beauty right here. Uh, <laughs> Washington Sangiovese, first off, something that's very rarely talked about amazing, amazing place to grow San Giovese. It's beautiful climate for it. Uh, so it's something that gets overlooked and you can get some world-class wines out of there. And you're talking about family that's as Italian as it gets. It's, it's San Giovese made by an Italian family that's been in Walla Walla for over a hundred years. Um, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So first off you can see, well, you can't see, I can. Um, gorgeous color, beautiful clarity to it. I mean, this is 100% Sangiovese, no blend whatsoever, just straight in, straight out. Uh, 22 months, are, it's going to be 22 months um, done in actually neutral punchins, and then also on top of that, uh, ovo botti, uh, so which are basically very large barrels, and that's actually what they, they use to make wines in Barolo, Barbaresco, and Brunelta Monticino. Um, and some other wineries have picked it up in California as well, and of course Washington. Now, it's also, oh, that smells really good. Uh, it's also fairly rare. They only make 865 six packs, not cases, six packs of this for this particular vintage of 2013. Um, for tasting notes, uh, what I, would, I can get right off the bat is red fruit for sure, cranberry, cherry, um, kind of uh, dried pomegranate, if you will, kind of craisin also, not just regular cranberry, but almost like dried, dried uh, raisin on there. There's some spice, but it's, it's more kind of like a, a saddlewood type thing. Um, I mean, sandalwood uh, type thing, not saddlewood. Um, uh, decent alcohol to it. Good balance on the nose. And now time for my favorite part of the sip. Tannic and dry, beautiful. Um, definitely brings tears, uh, not just, just to your eyes, but also to your mouth. I can get the city, extremely high city, very, very vibrant, extremely long finish. Uh, it just keeps on going and going. And I could talk for a while about it and I'd keep on tasting it. That's gorgeous. I'll be going back to that in a little bit. I actually want to see how these are opening up as they go along. Um, I actually got to try these all, as you noticed, hey, there's still a cork in all of them. Uh, these have all been done uh, with what's called, called a Coravon, a needle uh, gas exchange system that pumps argon in. Um, and I'll do another video on that sometime, but it's really, really cool. Actually, I think I'll do it with the figgins because uh, I, I want to drink some figgins after this. I'll do a video on it. Um, but uh, that's fantastic. Um, I'll have pricing on that as well right below. Now I'm actually going to go into the Merlot. This is something I, I'm in love with. Leonetti makes my favorite Merlot out of Washington, without, without a doubt. I, there's not even a comparison. 
small production also. There's a little bit of calf ronk, which helps like pop it up a little bit. Um, made very similarly to Sangiovese. So once again, you're going to have uh, not 22, but 15 months in, uh, in, some, in some neutral and then also done in the Oval Boti. Uh, and I'll have a picture of that if you haven't seen already. I'll edit it in. Um, so really interesting to see how they do it. Uh, so only 15 months on there, so not nearly the concentration. But let's go ahead and see what we're smelling. It's tons of blueberry, kind of like a dusty blueberry type thing to it also. Just tons of blue fruit, just lots and lots. And also, there's definitely a floral aspect to it. And almost an herbal, like almost like a white tea type thing. Um, almost like that royal white tea. Uh, ooh, really aromatic. And also doesn't have a ton of spice brought in from the oak because it's, it's older oak, so it's a, got a little bit of spice into it, but it's not like punching you in the face with vanilla, so it's not covering up the Merlot. You're still getting all that beautiful essence where you have the elegance on the nose right off the bat. <sighs> Gorgeous. Mmm. Silky tannins it just glides over with some grip because you can feel the power and probably, probably the ageability. Um, they, I think they quote on their website uh, the sort of aging that they expect to see from these wines. This is going to be ridiculous. This is You're going to have tons of time. If you want to drink it now, it's drinking fantastic. It hasn't even opened up because the one drawback of doing a of doing a Coravon is it's not really opening after you open it. Like So when you pop the bottle, it's not breathing, it's not expanding, it's not partially oxidizing so you don't have a change up it just stays the same so it's only been just opening since oh gosh i think we poured this about maybe 30 minutes ago or so so it's only had 30 minutes to open up it's already getting really really expressive absolutely beautiful wine i would do not sleep on that merlot that merlot is fantastic very overlooked varietal would hold against any napa red any napa red without a doubt fantastic wine um, and also for pairing options, I've, I've had Merlot work extremely well in the same places that Cab Franc tends to. So if you have like a lamb rack, like a rack of lamb, it works very well. Um, but actually where I like to have Merlot is I like it with a uh, kind of a lamb chop cut. Uh, but not only that, but if you ever do like horseradish and mint and gelée, so good. Ridiculous. Um, completely different type of meat, even though it is still lamb, but works shockingly well extremely well. Somehow Merlot is able to pull it out with mint and a, lo a lot of reds really can't. Um, next one up after that is going to be the 2013 Cab, which is going to be good. <laughs> I can already tell you that. Um, Walla Walla has, you're going to see a lot of really, really great wines for Walla Walla. It shines with Merlot like no one's business because it just happens to be able to be a perfect place for Merlot. But also, you're going to see any of the Bordeaux varietals work really well. And then uh, uh, another certain part of Walla Walla, you're going to see really good Syrahs. But where this is coming from, about as good as you can get for Bordeaux varietals. So if, if you're growing Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, or Petit Verdot, which this has a lot more Petit Verdot than a lot of blends. This is 75% Cab, 9% uh, Merlot, and 9% um, Petit Verdot. So equal parts Merlot and Petit Verdot. Um, which is a varietal that a lot of people don't know about, uh, at least not yet, because it's used to blend. It's usually add in to add, some, uh, add a kick, if you will, to a wine, add, add a little bit of power, add a little inkiness to it. Um, and you can see it on the color off the bat. It's, that is inky. That's got a lot of concentration. I would suggest not spilling this for the reason that, first off, you're spilling a, a treasure, <laughs> and then secondly, because you're not getting that stain out. <laughs> I tell you right now. Uh, just looking at now on this, this is going to have significantly more oak than the Merlot. 22, uh, 22 months in new and once filled oak, uh, French oak, I believe. Um, now on to the nose. I get black fruit and blue fruit on that, and what I mean by that is I get blackberry right. The, uh, like so, I get blackberry is the, is the kicker, which you expect from something that's cab heavy, and also from Petit Verdot, um, blueberry. I'm getting that as well. I'm expecting that's probably from the little bit of Merlot that's in there because blueberry is very indicative of uh, both Merlot and some Syrahs. Uh, 
but kind of a wildness to it that I like a lot. There's a spice. There's a, an obvious spice. <sighs> a black pepper, and then also um, where I got white tea in the previous one, I get I get black tea with this. A little bit of that, a little bit of leather as well. Kind of a foresty scent as well. Um, kind of like you're walking through um, kind of an old forest. There's not really a better way for me to really describe it, really. And now for the power. Mouthfeel much larger than the San Giovese and the Merlot. And there's a reason for these lined up the way they are. The San Giovese was the leanest so far, where it was bright, red fruit, vibrant, lots of kick to it, um, kind of pierced through. It's, it'd be a really good wine to like cut into a meal, versus the Merlot is more seductive and beautiful and lush. Uh, this cab is, now it's a cab blend, it's only 75% cab, and the limit in, in Washington is 75%. If you have less than 75%, it's, it then would become a blend. 75% or higher is going to be Cabernet. Can you tell the difference between 70, 75% and 72%? I wouldn't be able to, but legally that's how it's done. Um, now, oh man. Now the reason that they don't just go straight cab on that, that's just really good, sorry. Um, the reason why they don't just go straight cab is uh, something that, an art that we overlook is the art of blending, properly blending uh, a wine. And bringing out the best uh, best parts. So think of the Beatles. Now, I mean, we could almost forget about Ringo, um, but otherwise, with the Beatles, if if you didn't have Paul with John, they would never have been as great as they had been. So you need to have things that mesh really well together, that that juxtapose each other. And Cab, Petit Verdot, Merlot, they all they all do that. So you have a little bit of that kind of demure, if you will, the Merlot would almost uh, be more kind of like a demure style while you're going to have more of that pizzazz that comes from Cab and its power. And the Petit Verdot is just there to, to be kind of the surly one in the group. Um, that's amazing. Um, one of the best values in the store, I'll say, if you're a collector especially. Really, really rare, uh, but a little bit easier to get than the Merlot and the Sangiovese because it has a little bit bigger of a following. Um, that's 2,876 six-packs. Oh, if I forgot to say how much is on the Merlot, the Merlot is 1,898. Uh, so you see 1,898 of the Merlot six packs, once again, six packs, which is crazy, and 2,876. So you'd be seeing less than 1,500 full-size cases if we're talking about 12 packs. And for scale, I'm not going to use a lot of examples. There's some big producers that will do well over 40,000 that are still charging like $100 a bottle legitimately. It's kind of crazy. Or up in that range. You'll see 70 to 100. There's a lot of people that produce 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. This is 1,500 if it was normal size. Um, absolutely insane. Uh, I feel bad uh, skipping to the next one. Also, I'm getting a little of a mint thing now also. It's starting to open up a little more. I'm getting kind of like a, a mint uh, essence that's wafting out. It's really complex, really complex. Now time for the big boy. This is the uh, 2013 Reserve. I'm looking forward to this a lot. There's some days where my job's difficult. This is one of those days I look forward to. This is, this is something that I'm going to enjoy. Oh, man. So much inkier. It uh, has a, a very similar blend uh, to, uh, to the cab. Once again, 81% cab, 11% Petit Verdot, and 8% Merlot. And you can see that color. is crazy. That is just... I can't see my hand through it. That's intense. If I was saying earlier, don't spill, really don't spill this. I mean, it'd make your carpet look gorgeous, though. And you just have to cover your entire carpet with this wine, which would be a travesty, but an interesting story. Um, okay, time to go into the nose on that. Whew. Just a much more powerful version of the cab is what it seems like. Um, oh, man. Way more just flat out cassis, dark fruit, really dark fruit, um, almost like a, a creme de cassis. So not just currant, which currant makes cassis, that's how you make creme de cassis, but it's more concentrated, more liqueur-like, uh, much more potent, uh, almost, almost like a concentrate. Uh, oh man, a little bit more boozy too. 
it's got a little bit more alcohol in there, which I think will blow out in, uh, shortly. Um, but it's got 22 months, uh, just like like the cab did, um, of new and once used oak. Damn, look at the legs on that. That's crazy. It's extremely concentrated. Um, also floral. I can get it from here. Uh, it's extremely floral. Lots of dark flowers on that. Um, and only 1,100 six-packs made. That's 1,102 six-packs made, so a little bit over 500 normal size cases. Um, oh, man. That's an Opus 1 killer if I've ever seen one. Um, if someone was blinding on this and they're a big, big red fan um, and they drank all the big boys, Insignia, Opus, just think about the biggest biggest style of red blend you can. You can. Um, this could probably win in a blind. The concentration is just so great. There's so much to it. I mean, there's an elegance to it, but it's just, it's big. It's huge. It has almost kind of a... Um, a little bit almost metallic tint on the back, almost kind of like an irony copper thing. Um, very subtle, uh, but just I think that's coming from the power. It's a little bit meatier. Um, but just so much concentration. That's insane. I might be tasting this for a long time. Oh, So overall, kind of going back on it, I'm not going to spit that after this. Um, going back over the wines, um, we'll have limited availability of these. Hopefully this was helpful to you to kind of understand the flavor profiles and and what to expect out of them. Um, I'll have pricing, of course, listed out for all of you. Uh, it's going to be a first come basis. I'm not going to have a lot of availability. Uh, Kansas, we're lucky to even get this. I'm kind of shocked that we can for retail sale. This is whew, that's amazing. I'm gonna buy some myself. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you in the store.